CataractCoach.com with another white cataract. In this case, we're going to show you the double capsorexis technique. Here's the tripan blue dye, and now we'll dilute it with some anesthetic, some lidocaine. Why do we want a double capsorexis? Well, this is an intumescent white cataract, or fluid filled. And we want to do a small capsorexis initially, then depressurize the capsor bag, and then do our normal size capsorexis. So there's the viscoelastic being instilled in the anterior chamber. I use a dispersive viscoelastic to maintain the AC, but also to protect the corneal endothelium. We're going to make a second paracentesis here. There's our second paracentesis. And now remember the anterior chamber is highly pressurized here. We're going to put a little extra viscoelastic. We want the AC pressure high, higher than the intralenticular pressure. So an AC pressure probably 40 or even 50 millimeters of mercury. Next, we'll place a cystotome through the paracentesis. We'll puncture the lens capsule, and we're going to try to create a tiny little baby capsulorexis just using the cystotome. We want to do this quickly and efficiently. We don't want to allow too much fluid to escape from the lens. So there's a milky white lens. There is fluid there. The reason why we're not getting too much fluid escaping is that we have the anterior chamber pressure very high, probably 40 or 50 millimeters of mercury. So now we have a complete capsulorexis, albeit a very small and eccentric one. That's okay. I'm now shaking the lens that's in the capsule, tilting it, twisting it, pushing on it to let any fluid come forwards with no weak edges, that round, small capsorexis will allow us to depressurize the capsor bag without worrying about it radializing. Here's our main incision made with a diamond keratome. The small rexus allows us to prevent the Argentinian flag sign. So we'll now put the phaco probe in the eye. We're not gonna do phaco through the small incision. We're just gonna aspirate. So going in that hole, and aspirate out, and let's get out any fluid that may be remaining in there. That's enough. You could have used the IA probe as well. Now more viscoelastic will be put in the eye. I am absolutely sure that the pressure within the capsular bag now is very low. We're gonna to try to enlarge this rexus now by grabbing it. You know what, the forceps weren't sharp enough. So we'll use a cystotome from before, make a nick here in the capsule. There it is. Now let's go back to the capsorexis forceps. If you've been watching my videos, you know that these forceps are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters from the tip. So now we can tear our normal capsorexis, which will encompass the initial small baby rexus. And we can complete it and it doesn't have the risk of radializing like before because the whole capsule bag has been depressurized. Now that's a nice, round, sufficiently large capsule axis. At this point, we can proceed with phaco as normal. We'll buzz into the nucleus, clean up some of this cortex first, clean up that milky stuff. You know what? I realized in going in here, this whole thing is soft. We're not going to chop. we got to prolapse it out of the bag first. So use some viscoelastic to bring the lens out of the capsule bag. Now let's go back in here. It's reasonably soft. Chopper goes around it. We break it into pieces. There we go. Not a super dense nucleus. Not too much phaco energy is required here. Just keeping the pieces in front of the phaco probe. And the chopper's feeding them towards the probe. And of course, we'll be done with the nucleus removal in just a matter of seconds. So let's clean up the capsular bag, remove that cortex with the IA probe. So we'll switch over to the IA probe. Important to remember that sometimes these white cataract patients have some scarring of the capsular bag, and you may not be able to remove all the little opacities that you see. 
In addition, keep in mind that we use special lighting to highlight the red reflex, especially for these videos, and that can exacerbate the appearance of any capsular uh, opacities. Removing everything that we can see that looks pretty clean. That looks great. So keep this technique in mind, the double caps rexus. It's very useful, especially if you don't have access to a half a million dollar femtosecond laser. You can certainly use a simple cystitome or bent needle to accomplish a very similar margin of safety. The IOL is going to be implanted down the capsular bag. This is a single piece acrylic monofocal lens that goes beautifully within the capsular bag. We'll use our chopper to position the lens. This lens has a six millimeter optic and we'll see that our original uh, second capsular axis of five millimeters will overlap it nicely. We rotate the lens and the reason is that'll help free up any residual cortex or lens material trapped at the equator of the capsule bag. Going behind the lens now to remove the viscoelastic. This is starting to look pretty good. I do like to remove the viscoelastic from behind the lenses. I find that it makes a quicker post-op recovery of good vision and helps to avoid post-operative IOP spikes. So removing all the viscoelastic we can see from the anterior chamber, and you can see the overlap of the rexus on top of that optic, which looks great. Now this six millimeter lens does look big in this eye. In fact, this patient is hyperopic, and that's why the lens appears to be on the larger side. I'm going to do some hydration of the main incision, seal that up, that looks great. And through the paresthesis, I'll first irrigate out the angle of the eye, get out any residual viscoelastic, or perhaps any lens pieces that are remaining. There's a little viscoelastic, that looks great, we'll get that out of the eye. Irrigate a little bit more, and then hydrate up, that looks great. These patients may also have a little more inflammation post-op, so I'm going to put some triamcinolone in the anterior chamber to help deal with the post-operative inflammation. That looks great. So thank you guys for watching.